Okay, so I've got some more mailbag things to do here. So I believe these are all capacitors which I need for the fluke. So hopefully I can get that uh, finished off soon. Okay, let's look at the first thing here. So what do we have? These are 220 UF, 10 volt. All, all axial caps because that's what I need for the fluke. Lots of axials. There's a 330 UF, 16 volt. And 220 UF, 35 volt. There's a jack on brand again. I don't know. I need to look at this jack on thing. Is that. You know, where are those coming from? Because I'm not, I don't remember buying jack on brand online. And what brand are these? It's probably Vichy or something, are they? Don't know. Can't tell. Don't know. These could be Vichy or something like that. But. Um, okay, so that's those ones, which are some of the caps I need for it. Okay, next thing. And these are 15 UF 450 volt. Wow. <laughs> Reefer. Hmm. So two of those. 15 reef for 50 volt. Okay. I think I already did those caps, but because I got impatient and went to um anyway, 14 as well. Okay. Next one. I can get into it. Come on, let me in. Right. Hoping these are the ones I'm waiting for. Or particular particularly waiting for. No, they're not. Uh, so he's a 16 volt, 22,000 UF. Oh yes, I'm waiting for those. I am. I'll show you one that's going to replace. And that is to replace this one here. So, size is a little bit different, isn't it? Just slightly. Makes me wonder if I should have actually upgraded the spec on that. But uh, that'd be fine. So I think it's a 5 volt supply. Pretty sure it was a 5 volt supply on that thing. I don't remember now, but um, yeah, that's, that's four. So I've got one to put on now and one as a spare. So I've got one for parts. I don't use this type of capacitor very often. It's only recently I've had to use them. I've got some mailbag stuff here to do. So uh, we'll see what we've got. First thing. Looks fairly small, should be interesting. Three small heat sinks. Um, I thought I'd get these just as stock because um, they are not self adhesive either. They just um, you have to glue them on. But uh, I thought I'd get some of these for stock because I didn't have anything of this kind of size, um, and I thought it might be handy if I need to increase the cooling on something. And I could just like glue one of these almost on thermal adhesive and add to the cooling efficiency or something if I find something's running a bit hot, you know. Just to help the longevity. If I remember, I'll put links down below as well for items. Um, time is not on my side these days, so um, I can't promise anything. If you want a link, ask for it. I'll get it for you, but otherwise, I may not have to get it done.
business is a collection of heat sinks. I thought I think I might have gone a bit over, overboard with getting heat sinks. Um, I just went through a little phase there where I needed some and I didn't have anything I wanted to use. Um, so I've got a range. I've got some some copper ones. Um, that's 0.8 mil. Uh, 1.2 mil, so it's a bit thicker. 1.2 again. I'm not quite, I don't actually remember what I purchased. That's 1.2 again. 1.2 again. Yeah, it's probably all the same sort of size as a 0.8 again. 0.8 and 1.2. So yeah, I've got. To, I just sort of get some little blocks of copper. You know, sometimes you just need just a little bit. You know, um, you need something quite slim lined to fit into a tight space. You know, you ain't got much space there, but you don't want to add some cooling. And um, this is also the reason I purchased these brackets here in a previous mailbag is because this I can attach it to a transistor. So these obviously require adhesive, but um, that's fine. And we've got these extruded um, pot heat sinks as well. So it's just quite a long one there. Um, so you can just cut the size and you know, drill a hole on or glue it on or whatever. So I've got a few of those. Oh, got another one there. Point eight. Um, one, two, three, four of those I've got. Uh, I think they're all the same. They all look the same. So yeah. There might be some, something that interests someone, I don't know. Uh, but for me, it's just getting stuff in stock, so I've got things when I need them. Alright, last thing. Let's see what's in here. Hopefully. Alright. What do we have? I'm waiting for capacitors. 450 volt, 270 UF. Yes. Yes. Right. And these are all the same. Yes, they are. Okay, so these ones are like the last capacitors we're waiting for to fix the fluke. Um, so these are nipping, nip on chemical and the snap in type. So I've got these ones here. Here, which I also got in a previous mail bag, was a very big difference in weight. This weighs very little compared to this one. It's probably, I don't know, two thirds. You know, it's probably a third, a third lighter. Um, these are 105, and this is 85. So I'm glad I waited for these parts to arrive. I thought I'd ordered some more. Um, so these are some quite good ones, if I remember rightly. I mean, Nepon Chemical, anyway. But um, I think they were. Quite high spec at XS, I can't remember were. And I think these were Panasonic. Oh, sorry, Matsuta. Mats, this M, Mats, Matsuta? I don't know. Anyway, Pan Panasonic, anyway. So so these are probably going to be good cats, but I wanted better. I wanted a slightly higher capacity. So let's actually test one of these. And uh, just to confirm it, because the reason I didn't want to use those ones is because the um, capacity was actually slightly lower than rated. Because um, you got like a twenty percent tolerance on a lot of these capacitors, so it's not surprising to see it, um, you know, off by twenty percent. So it's uh, I always have to do this. It's a pain, but okay. I'm gonna clip on. This is one frequency. It's on one kilohertz, but uh, let's change it. 100 hertz. I wish it defaulted to 100 hertz. Let's have a trouble reading it. It's the parallel then. Hmm. Interesting. Come on, read it. It's having trouble with it, isn't it? I've been having a bit of issues with this thing recently, not reading caps. Um, a bit concerned about it. Let's um, turn on a segment instead. Let's just read it through the segments um, connections. And I've currently got uh, banana plugs on it, so I'm going to just hold those onto it. So I've been using these to plug into the front of the fluke to do testing. So uh, let's wait for it to boot up. So this has been read not reading a lot of caps recently. I mean, it's only 220 UF. Oh, sorry, 270 UF. It should be able to read that, but. It seems it doesn't want to. 
Let's see if I'm being too impatient about lines taking. All right, let's stick that on there. We'll see what we get. Two hundred and forty-six UF. That's better. Slightly higher spec. Um, I don't know what frequency that uses for testing, actually. But anyway, it seems better. Those ones only measure two hundred. This is at least forty more. So I'm, I'm confident that's good enough. I mean, only the originals are two two forties actually. So that's actually matches the original value. Right. Um, that's my bag. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you're not already subscribed, you know, make sure you do. If you are subscribed and the bell icon isn't um, highlighted with, with lines around it to show you get notifications, click on it to make sure you get notifications. Because although I've got nearly 3,000 subscribers at the time I'm recording this video, um, not all 3,000 subscribers watch all my videos. A large proportion of them um, don't seem to get notified about them even existing. So uh, if you want to make sure you don't miss my videos or you want at least want to have the option of choosing which ones you watch which is fine um, you have to be notified about them first so make sure you click on that bell icon to make sure it's you know got the lines around it to show you're going to get notifications um, otherwise you may not be notified about videos I'm posting you know such as you know mailbag or the fluke repairs or test equipment repairs in general or whatever I happen to be doing at the time